As you know now, if you've been with me for a while, a lot of the unhappiness in our lives comes from our thoughts. And specifically the shitty thoughts that ratchet down our life force little by little until there's nothing left. Okay, we're just barely getting through the day. People who don't have this problem don't really understand what it's like to go through this. So they really can't relate to, you know, what's wrong with that person? What's wrong with you? Why don't you just cheer up? But if you're getting inundated with micro slashes and pretty soon your life force is depleted, there's no way to get it back because the shit storm just keeps coming no matter what you do. So our goal with hack two is going to be to cut down on the micro slash hacks. Okay, so first thing you had to do is recognize what they were and now you know. If you don't know, you have to go back and, and study hack one and spend a little time observing the micro slashes that are whacking you. So the question that, that obviously arises as you're noticing all these shitty thoughts is, where do these shitty thoughts come from? Where do our thoughts come from? And depending on how you perceive, you know, the evolution of human consciousness, mankind has had at least 40,000 years and maybe a few million years of adequate consciousness to wonder, where are my thoughts coming from? And I would say that we don't really know. We don't have a good idea. We have a lot of opinions about that, but there's really no proof of where your thoughts come from. A significant portion of the population now would say, well, thoughts come from your brain. You know, if you don't have a brain, you're not going to have any thoughts. The pharmaceutical industry has developed this theory, let's say, that misery such as depression and anxiety are caused by some problems in the neurotransmitters in the brain, and they can prescribe drugs to help with this. And I think to some extent it has helped people who are really suffering from mental disorders. If you're taking those drugs, I'm not recommending that you stop. In fact, it'd be nuts to stop. You, The only way to get off those kind of drugs when you're ready, meaning you're no longer miserable, is to wean yourself according to a medical doctor's prescription or advice. So chemicals can affect your brain. Anybody who's ever done psychedelics or, you know, acid or psilocybin or ayahuasca knows that chemicals can really affect your thoughts. So we're not going to dismiss that. We'll just say that there are a lot of viewers who have been taking meds for their mis mental misery, depression, anxiety, and they're still watching this video because the meds haven't solved the problem. What we're doing today is an adjunct to your meds. Okay, let's leave it at that for now and get on with where do our thoughts come from. So, okay, maybe they come from brain chemistry. In that case, when you die, your consciousness ends and you don't have to worry about it anymore. But about 80% of the world's population think that consciousness continues after we die. And so of course, that consciousness is what's happening to thoughts, right? So I think there have been some interesting theories about where our thoughts come from. And, you know, one of the most standard ones over the years has been, you know, that you have the, the devil on one side or the, the devil's, you know, angels. You have God's angels on the other side and they're giving you, feeding you these thoughts, worrying over your immortal soul. Okay, that's, I think, billions of people think that thoughts are propagated by angelic messengers of the dark side or the light side. Another source of um, idea on this that people think thoughts come from, they just sort of sit out there in packets. And if you're in a negative vibration, like a radio channel tuning to the negative waves, you're going to start attracting or reading these negative thoughts. And if, you're, if your vibration is positive, you can uh, attract positive thoughts. So you get into this cycle. You're either in a downward cycle or an upward cycle. And there's a lot of energy trying to, you know, find a thought that feels better so that you can start this flywheel going to get a bunch of positive thoughts. Then you have the, the point of view that says, hey, you know, there are, there are, you're basically dwelling in your mind. There are various entities who are fighting for control. Sigmund Freud made very famous the idea of this you have the wild child id who just wants to pursue passions. Then you have the, the superego, the parental superego trying to war against the id. And you have the hapless ego in the middle trying to 
mediate between the id, the demands of the id, and the demands of the superego. There are other beliefs that have other characters moving around inside your mind, fighting for control of the microphone. And I think the most interesting one, or the most wild one, is by uh, David Quigley, who came up with the alchemical hypnotherapy with a uh, conference room therapy, because he has identified 24 sub-personalities fighting for control of your brain, or your mind. Another perspective on where your thoughts come from, heard about it from three different sources, and it was kind of shocking. And I'm going to propose it to you today as a way to maybe create a metaphor that's going to help us deal with this onslaught of thoughts pouring in from God knows where, right? And that is, I'm going to call it Lush, the parasite in the foreign installation. Okay, they're all similar versions of the same thing. So I came across the idea of Lush, L-O-O-S-H, put forth by a guy named Robert Monroe, who was famous uh, over the last several decades for his out-of-body experiences, where he could basically shift his consciousness outside his body, and he could, he could roam around the physical world, and he could also go beyond the physical world to higher levels uh, of consciousness. And he, he met some other entities uh, who were non-physical and had higher levels of consciousness. They told him that humans were farmed for emotional energy that were used, harvested by these other entities and used to seed new worlds. And I thought, wow, that's kind of brutal that we're no longer at the top of the food chain. And then I came across the Toltec view put forth by uh, Don Miguel Ruiz on one hand and Carlos Castaneda, another uh, well-known author or an anthropologist. And they put forth this idea of a parasite that is feeding off of your emotional energy. It's not physical, you can't see it, but it's feeding off your emotional energy. In Dinawan's case, the, the foreign installation is actually feeding you these negative thoughts in, in order to stir up your emotional energy and devour that emotional energy and just leaves you enough life force to sort of keep going. So if you're a one or a two right now and you feel like, oh, my life force is barely there, anytime something good starts to happen, something crashes down on me and I'm back down to, you know, just a little bit of life force, well, that kind of fits Don Juan's idea of this foreign installation. You're saying... Mackie man, you're out of your mind. I don't have a foreign installation feeding off my emotional energy. I would say, well, that's no more ridiculous than anything else. Any other point of view that think that some devil wants you to live for all eternity in hell isn't any crazier than this foreign installation idea, is it? If you do believe in life after death, that means you believe in non-physical entities, and they may not all be that friendly. Some of them may actually be trying to feed off your emotional energy. It doesn't really matter if this is true or not. What matters is, can we use this to regain your control of your life force? And that's what we're going to talk about in Hack 2. In order to embark on Hack 2 with me, you have to say, Mackie Man, I have mastered Hack 1. I know every time a shitty thought lands and my life force takes a hit, I'm aware of it immediately okay that's all if you've got that you're ready if you don't have that go back and watch hack one again and come back and see me later otherwise you're really wasting your time and we don't want you to do that